The annual Conservative Political Action Conference, known as CPAC, used to be a serious gathering of conservative intellectuals. Now, it's a complete shit show. All right, welcome. Welcome. I just wanted to say welcome to the end of democracy. <laughs> We're going to break down the two craziest moments from CPAC 2024, which was just held in Maryland last week. But first, I'm Brad Palumbo, and welcome back to Mediaite, your home for coverage and commentary on the intersection of media and politics. If you're new here, do consider subscribing and sticking around, and don't forget to like and comment with your thoughts as we go along. So the first viral moment from CPAC 2024 that I want to talk to you all about comes courtesy of Jack Pasebiak, a right-wing political commentator who infamously spread the Pizzagate hoax and had some interesting comments to make about democracy and January 6th that quickly went viral. All right, welcome. Welcome. I just wanted to say welcome to the end of democracy. <laughs> We're here to overthrow it completely. We didn't get all the way there on January 6th, but we will, we, we will endeavor to, forget, oh, oh, oh. to get rid of it and replace it with, with this right here. We'll replace it with this right, right. here. Amen. That's right, because all glory, all glory is not to government, all glory to God. That was uh, <laughs> quite something. On the surface level, I mean, these comments are pretty alarming and disturbing. He's openly saying that he wants to overthrow democracy, which in this context simply refers to a system of government where the people ultimately select their representatives and control the government through voting and replace it with a theocracy, I guess, represented by the cross that he holds up when he says what they'll replace it with, where religion controls the government most likely and there's no clear separation between church and state. He deserves points for honesty, I guess, but that's a pretty radical and authoritarian vision for American governance. And it's just kind of bizarre to see a conservative audience cheer for somebody railing against the American constitutional order as we know it. I'm not that old, but I am old enough to remember when being a conservative meant loving America and loving our constitution and wanting to preserve those things, not tear them down. Now, the most charitable and I think probably the most likely interpretation of of Jack Pasebiak's comments here are that he was trolling, or in a sense, he was joking. Essentially, he could have been attempting to antagonize the people who exaggerate the threat to democracy and call practically any Trump supporter an insurrectionist. That's kind of the narrative he's been suggesting since this clip went viral, and we don't actually know whether that was his original intent or it's kind of damage control, but either way, he's suggesting that it was a troll job and that actually Democrats are the ones who don't support democracy. Yet even if Jack Pasebiak was simply trolling in this clip, that's still not okay. <laughs> Destroying America's constitutional order isn't exactly a laughing matter. And if my critics constantly called me a far-right extremist, the one thing I most certainly wouldn't do is go up on stage at a national conference where I know all the cameras are rolling and act like a far-right extremist. You're just playing into your critics' hand and making yourself look like the crazy person they say you are. Congrats, I guess? But whether it was meant seriously or meant as a troll, the message expressed in that clip isn't exactly a great advertisement for the conservative movement and the conservative message to any Americans out there who are still undecided. Now let's talk about the second crazy moment from CPAC 2024, which perhaps unsurprisingly happened when Donald Trump took the stage to speak. With four more years of Biden, the hordes of illegal aliens stampeding across our borders will exceed 40 to 50 million people. Medicare, Social Security, health care and public education will buckle and collapse. It will collapse as sure as you're sitting or standing there. It will collapse. Our economy will be starved of energy by Crooked Joe's vindictive Green New Scam. It's a Green New Scam. It'll be the destruction of our country. And you'll have constant blockouts and blackouts and rampant inflation. Ruthless gangs will explode even more into the suburbs and when they talk about Suburban women, they're going to love me so much, they're going to say, oh, I wish we had that guy back. The gangs will be invading your territory, I can tell you that. While weaponized law enforcement hunts for conservatives and people of faith, religious, Hamas and Antifa will terrorize our streets while their brutal ideology, and it is brutal indeed, it is brutal and horrible like nobody's ever seen before, it takes over our schools. And a declining crooked Joe Biden. He's the crookedest, most incompetent president in the history of our country. <laughs> we'll soon have us losing 
World War III. We won't even be in World War III. We'll be losing World War III. You know, guys, I'm starting to think that Donald might just have a flair for the dramatic. I mean, we're seriously supposed to believe that if the guy who's been in office for like three years stays in office, then all these things that haven't happened while he's been president are suddenly going to happen and the sky is going to fall. I mean, Trump actually said that Hamas, the terrorist group that controls the Gaza Strip and is currently under siege by the Israeli military, will roam our streets and control our schools? I don't know about y'all, but I'm not going to be holding my breath waiting on that one. Of course, there are many legitimate criticisms to be made of President Biden on many of the issues Trump raised, from the border crisis and immigration, to his policies worsening inflation, and, and many more. But these hyper-alarmist doomsday predictions and warnings from Trump are just detached from reality and wildly exaggerated. And he, of all people, should know better, because Trump's critics made these same kind of dire apocalyptic predictions about what would happen if he was elected in 2016. Remember when New York Times columnist Paul Krugman predicted that if Trump was elected, it would trigger a global recession? Remember when polls showed that half the country was worried Trump would default on the debt and launch a nuke? Remember when a Guardian columnist worried that Trump being elected could end civilization and trigger a new era of darkness? And remember when none of those things happened? Politicians always have an incentive to scare us and be alarmed and make things sound so much worse than they actually are. After all, scared people show up to the polls and break out their wallets and donate to campaigns. But people who understand that no matter what happens, the sky is not, in fact, going to fall, not so much. This is why political conferences on both the left and right have always skewed extreme. But it hasn't always been this bad. There is some good news coming out of all this, though, because at least if you're somebody who's interested in sober-minded conservative analysis or fact-based political thinking, now you know not to waste your time at CPAC next year. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for joining me today to talk about this topic. If you're still here, you must have found something interesting or insightful so don't forget to subscribe and stick around for the next video and do like and comment with your thoughts below with that i'll see you all in the next video